This is question 1.1.4. It looks extremely intimidating at first, but let's see what we can do with this one. So the first thing I would do is I would multiply these two brackets together. Now what you should know is that when you multiply two square roots together, for example, square root 3 multiplied by square root 2 gives you square root 6. If you're a little bit confused right now, let me prove this to you. What if I said the square root of 4 times by the square root of 4? Some of you are quite comfortable to tell me that the answer is 4. But let me show you why that is. Because if we stick to my rule and say that you should multiply these two values, you would end up with the square root of 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So in summary, when you have two square roots multiplied by each other, the answer is just the square is just the two numbers multiplied together. And so if I multiply these two big square roots together, then the answer, well actually let me just write this a little bit bigger. I want to make sure that you guys get this. And so what's going to happen is that this square root on the left and this square root on the right, they're going to multiply together and they're going to become one big square root. So I'm going to make it one big square root and everything else on the inside is going to stay as it is. Don't worry too much about the square roots that we can see there. And then square root of 32 minus x equals 2x. What I would then do is I would multiply these two brackets out on the inside. But there's various ways. You, what you might have thought of doing, and it's absolutely fine, I think I might actually do that, I think it'll be better, is let's try get rid of the square root over here. How could we do that? Well, well done if you said we could square both sides. Because in maths, if you can do pretty much anything as long as you do it on both sides. So I'm going to square this side and I'm going to square this side. Now what this 2 does over here is it completely erases the square root. But everything else stays the same. And so what we have now is the square root of 32 plus x. And that's all going to be equal to x squared. Now, you, you didn't have to do it like that. You could have first multiplied the two brackets out and then squared. It doesn't really matter in maths as long as you don't break any of the main rules. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to multiply these two brackets together. And so I'm going to start off with the square root of 32 multiplied by the square root of 32. Now, of course, you're in the test, you could just use your calculator. But if you remember what I said, I said that the square root of a number times the square root of the same number just becomes that number. If what I just said is completely going over your head, just multiply them together on your calculator and you will get 32. I'm then going to multiply those and that's going to give me minus x square root 32. Then I'm going to multiply these two and that's going to give me x square root 32. And then lastly, those two. So that's going to be negative x squared is equal to x squared. What now happens, and this is awesome, it's going to make our life very easy, is that this part and this part cancel out because the one is a negative and the one is a positive. So they can be crossed out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative x squared over to the right hand side and that's going to give me 32 equals to 2x to the power of 2. I'm then going to divide by 2. And so that's going to give me x squared is equal to 16. And now there's multiple ways to go from here. What some students would do is you would take the 16 over to the left where you would realize that this is a difference of squares and you would factorize that as x minus 4 and x plus 4 is equal to 0. Then your two answers would be x is equal to 4 or x is equal to negative 4. Other students, in fact most students at this step, would take the square root and you would end up with 4. But the, the, the risky part about doing this method is that you very often you might forget to say plus and minus. Remember that guys, when you take a square root the answer is plus and minus. So the square root of 16 is 4, so then you should say x is equal to plus and minus 4. Now something that, some, some area where a lot of students forget, and it doesn't really matter to be honest, because you'll only lose maybe one mark if you forget to do this point or this step. But when you have a question that has a square root in it, always take your answer and check it. Make sure that it works. So for example, the way that you would check it is you would take your first answer, which is x is equal to 4, and you would plug that into all the places where there is an x. And I would only plug it into the left hand side for now. And so you could actually say here left hand side if you wanted to. I would then go type all of this on my calculator. 
and that gives me an answer of 4. I would then go plug x into the right hand side which is literally just x so that means that's going to be 4 and therefore everything looks good because the left hand side is the right hand side and that's good. I would then do the same process using negative 4 and so that would become negative 4. Be careful over here because there's already a negative and your number is a negative 4 it's actually going to turn into positive 4. I would then type all of this on the calculator and that's going to give me 4. I would then have a look at the right hand side which is just the negative 4 and so have a look at this the left hand side and the right hand side are not equal to each other and so therefore x can only be equal to 4.